You are live with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here with my good friend, John Beeler. We got a really cool show today. Later on, uh, we'll be talking about electric vehicles again, the new Kia Soul 2021. John's had a chance to uh, try this uh, puppy out and pretty excited about it. So we'll uh, chat about some of the cool features there and how much money you can save on uh, using an electric vehicle as opposed to uh, gas. We'll also be chatting about our experience with the new shop mobile plans. Both John and I have tried this out. They've got some really compelling plans starting at $0, which I always like $0. Uh, and uh, up from there, we'll tell you uh, how the coverage is and our, our overall experience uh, with it. And uh, we've got Ted Kritsonos uh, on the line uh, coming up in a bit to talk about the new Start Me Stick from the folks that brought you the Fix Me Stick. If you've got an old computer wanting to breathe a little extra life into it, this might do the trick. John, let's talk about some of the tech news. Uh, the big thing we've been getting tons of questions about is Canada's COVID alert app. And uh, it, it, it's interesting because I, I wholly uh, support this. I think they've done a good job with the privacy aspects of it. Uh, I'm going to be downloading it. I haven't downloaded it yet, but you know, from my understanding, it's only working in Ontario right now. We haven't got any word as to when it'll be launching in uh, the rest of the, the provinces, but already some challenges, uh, including it won't work on older iPhones and Android phones. Yeah, definitely that's going to be a challenge for some people where they're just not going to be able to install it uh, at all. Uh, now's a good time for you to see if that's going to be your situation. Um, We've heard that there might be some options for people that don't have the ability to install it. Uh, we've seen questions from people even wondering if they can just use their web browser to install it. And it's like it's meant to be on your person as you're moving around the world uh, in, in logging interactions with other people anonymously, uh, not tracking your location, not tracking anything personal, identifiable at all. Um, but it does kind of work in BC. It actually works everywhere in the country right now, but only f as far as the logging goes. It doesn't actually we wouldn't actually alert you to anything because there's no way in currently in BC, for example, to uh, enter in uh, the, the code that you would need that you would get if you were infected with COVID uh, to then start the uh, sort of the chain reaction in this app that would actually start alerting people that they had been interacting with you and that they should probably consult with their medical professionals to see about getting a test and all that type of stuff. Um, so definitely there's benefits to running it now because it will just log the interactions and it'll store that data uh, for 15 days. Uh, and again, it's storing randomized numbers, not personal identifiable information, not your GPS location, none of that stuff. So from my understanding, uh, it won't work on older iPhones like iPhone 6s or earlier. So that is a big challenge. They say, you know, for a lot of these types of apps to work, these uh, contact tracing or notification uh, tracing uh, apps, you need uh, anywhere from 65 to 80% of the population using them. And that apparently is impossible with the amount of old phones <laughs> that yeah. are out there. So it's, I, I guess it's just one tool out there to potentially. Right. And we should also probably mention this won't work on your iPad or your Android tablet either. Yeah. We've had a lot of, a lot of questions about uh, that uh, uh, as uh, well. What else we got in the news, John? Uh, well, Google announced a bunch of things this week, as did Samsung. Uh, we're going to spend, uh, I think, a good chunk of the app show tomorrow talking about uh, Samsung's announcements. But Google announced the Pixel 5, uh, Pixel 4a 5G, and the 4a all at once. Uh, it's all Pixel all the time. Yeah, we'll uh, be getting our hands on the uh, 4A coming up. This is their budget uh, phone uh, that still has a fantastic camera on it. And, you know, that's, I think, a reason for a lot of people to be upgrading phones uh, nowadays is just to get a better camera. The Google Pixel line has been uh, instrumental in driving, uh, I think, the industry forward as far as the quality, especially when it comes to uh, uh taking pictures in the dark or, or night shots. And this, uh, this new one won't disappoint there. Uh, so we will be doing a review on that in the next uh, week or two. So stay tuned for that. Want to talk about, again, some of the things we're chatting about on the show today. If you saw some of those great deals on those new shop mobile plans here in BC and Alberta, we will be telling you about our experience uh, with uh, the, uh, the new shop mobile plans. John and I have both tried it out uh, on some of our phones. And uh, we'll also be chatting uh, about a new electric vehicle that John's had a chance to try out, the Kia Soul 2021, all electric, no more gas. You're listening to Get Connected here on the Chorus Radio Network. Back after this. 
You are back with Get Connected. Mike Eggerbo here with John Beeler. Still lots to cover on today's program, including uh, our first thoughts on the new Shaw mobile service. John and I have both had a chance to uh, check it out. Is it worth the great deals they're offering? We'll let you know. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about electric vehicles. Uh, John uh, has uh, tried out uh, the new 2021 uh, Kia EV. We'll get his first thoughts on that uh, as well. Right now, let's talk about uh, computers. Uh, A lot of us have older computers that just seem to get slower and slower. Well, we've got something that might... uh, give a little extra pep to your browsing. On the line, we've got our good friend, Ted Kritsonos. He is uh, out of uh, Toronto and uh, has had a chance to check out the new Start Me Stick from the same folks uh, that uh, brought you the Fix Me Stick. Thanks for joining us, Ted. Good to be with you guys. Start Me Stick. uh, Tell us what this is all about. It's basically a USB key that you can plug into uh, pretty well most uh, Windows PCs and, and even some select Macs as well to give you a fast browsing experience. Can you explain how it works? Uh, well, you pretty much touched the basics right there. So basically what happens is is you plug the device in and then you're essentially running a, a, what's a Chromium browser. So Chromium is an open source version of Chrome, uh, Google's uh, browser. And from there, what you have is a pretty seamless, I mean, albeit basic, but seamless, private, and fast browsing experience. So you're not tied down by Windows or Mac, right? Because it's running, essentially, it's running a separate OS, browser-based as it may be, but it's running a separate OS that is not encumbered by what the computer itself is running on. So imagine, like, you're, you know, if your computer is a Windows this is running something else on top of that, but it's separate from Windows. And so what happens is, is that you're, you're running something really lightweight that isn't bogged down by anything else that the system is running, typically with something like Windows or even Mac OS. So basically, you would uh, plug this into a computer. Do you have to boot it up to make this work, or can you launch it from Windows or a Mac operating system? Well, when you plug it in, it launches on its own. So, so when, when you plug it in, it launches on its own. And then from there, you're, you're in that, I don't want to call it a world, but you know, you're, you're in that interface. And so you're, you're, you're just using that at that point. Um, and you can plug in an external hard drive because the stick itself has no internal storage. You can't save anything to it. So for an example, if you wanted to access, let's say cloud storage. So you've got, you've got documents or photos, something you want to access and it was too difficult to do it on this older computer that you have or this computer that's just not running very well. So you plug in the Start Me Stick, you access through the browser on there what it is you're looking for, and you can then save the files that you want. However, to save them, you need to plug in an external drive or a, a thumb drive, whether it's external drive, thumb drive, whatever it is, or anything, any kind of external storage, basically. And then you would have to drag and drop them into that storage because the stick itself doesn't have anything that you can save on it. And that's partly, that's partly the angle, is that it's based on privacy, so nothing about you is tied to the device. So even if you lose it, it's not something that's you know, based on you know, uh, uh, your identity uh, or a login or, or anything like that. So it's, it, the idea is to kind of anonymize the user and also anonymize the browsing experience at the same time. It kind of almost turns your computer into a Chromebook, kind of, doesn't it? It kind of, I think, as a Chromebook in the traditional sense or in the original sense. Because if you guys remember, the original Chromebooks were largely browser-based, right? So Chrome OS at the time was pretty much the Chrome browser that everything sort of played off of. This is kind of the same idea. Of course, it's open source, so it's not Chrome itself. It's Chromium. But you're right. You're You're on the right track because really... You are only getting this device if you want a browsing experience that is going to be pretty seamless and just easy. You know, there's not, not a lot of bells and whistles. You know, you're not installing extensions and, you know, and things like that. It, it's not like, it's not that. It's just basic browsing. Even if you want to stream, you can stream Netflix or Disney Plus or any of those services. They will work on this browser without any problem. I've tested it so far and it seems to be fine. So you, you can also enjoy content on it, which is, I think, part of the angle also in that you can almost breathe new life into a computer if you want to use it for a singular purpose. And so it, it can access, sorry, John, it can access the files of the original hard drive on the computer and can it access like printers and things like that? So 
for print, I haven't tried printing, so I don't know how easy it would be to print. Now, presumably, if you, if the printer is connected to the network, because again, you need Wi-Fi in order mm-hmm. to even use this thing. So if it's connected to the network, you might be able to. It's something I'm actually going to try uh, to see if I can if I can pull that off. Uh, but you know, this, the the Start Me Stick website actually has a very good FAQ that covers a lot of different questions. And one of those is actually in there about printing. Uh, in terms of accessing files, yes, to a degree, uh, you, you can access files. But again, when you're running this, you are essentially running something that is over and above the, the actual OS itself. So you are, you're, you're not going to be accessing the apps that you have on Windows or Mac necessarily while you're running this, right? You kind of have to get out before you can go back in to the, the actual OS of the computer that you're using, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I think really there's, there's a couple potential use cases here for people. One, they've got an older computer that maybe is slow down. Uh, there's just like too much overhead. Say they're running Windows XP or, you know, some other version of Windows that's not Windows 10, for example, or Windows 10 is running on it and it's running really slow because it's an old computer. This would potentially get rid of that overhead layer and make it run faster, but with a much more limited set of options of what you can actually do. Um, and then the other angle, which you mentioned, Ted, was the security and privacy aspect where there's basically no breadcrumbs left behind. There's no yeah. No logging, none of that kind of stuff. That uh, so, if you wanted to have a, a very clean experience on a computer without any potential, you know, I mean, obviously, if you log into Facebook on it, when you log into Facebook on that computer for that moment in time, whatever Facebook is doing is going to happen. But there's nothing else for Facebook to access because that that particular uh, instance of the computer, if you will, is pretty clean as far as that goes. Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I think you hit it on the head there, and and so it they play up the privacy angle primarily because it, what it is, is just a browser and, and it's not, you know, you're not going in there with all kinds of bookmarks and, you know, and, and, and it will remember your passwords kind of like Chrome does. So, I mean, if you guys use it, you'll know that if you're, if you keep using the same website over and over again, it'll kind of remember your username and then you can type in the password. So that, that works the same way here too. Um, and, and it's, it's fine. I mean, from what I've seen, it's pretty straightforward, which is why, although you could argue that this was aimed prim- mainly at users who aren't necessarily tech savvy, but even, a, you know, even someone who is a little more tech savvy could appreciate using something like this, especially if they wanted to use it for a particular reason. So maybe they have an old laptop lying around and they don't want to get rid of it. So they just use it, you know, as a web browser that they can watch content on, I don't know, while they're having a meal or something, right? I, I, I think that's kind of the angle here. I think if you're a, a savvy tech user, you probably already know that you could install, you know, uh, some kind of bootable Linux version, yeah. for example, mm-hmm. whereas this is really meant for the non-technical people that just yeah. want something that they can plug in, it'll just work. Um, I think the main got you here for me is just that it's a subscription service. You're buying the it stick is. for $80 Canadian, and that's good for one year of use with it. So one angle that I was thinking would be good for is if you're, you know, your computer's getting older and slower, you just can't quite afford a new computer right now, this might buy you another year of time with that computer. Yeah, that's a good point. You can look at it almost like a bridge. Uh, yeah. So it's, yeah, yeah, to kind of buy you some time. So if, if the main thing you're doing on, the, on, on an older computer is browsing anyway, this can buy you some time before you end up getting something new. Um, but I, I wouldn't look at it as a productivity product. No. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's I, – I didn't get that impression using it, that, that this is something that I would necessarily get any productivity out of. Now, that's not to say that you can't do anything productive. You can access Google Docs and work on a Google Doc. You know, you have access to the keyboard, you've got the trackpad, and you've got the document there in the browser, so you can technically work on something. But I, I, I didn't really see it as a productivity tool, and I don't think people should buy it necessarily for that reason, unless, as you said, they can't really, maybe they're not ready, they can't afford a new computer, and they want to just just stretch out the life a little bit more of the one they have. That, that is one way to do it, but it does come at a cost. I mean, think about it. You know, you started either 15 bucks for 30 days, okay, and then you jump up to 80 for a year, and then it's, and then it's 100 for two years. So the best deal is actually the two-year deal, 
so long as you know that you're going to be using it for that long, right? Well, one of the things we, we talk about a lot is, you know, everyone's going back to school and back to work from home uh, and not enough computers in the house to do things like Zoom and other things like that. So this, it sounds like it, it may or may not be a good fit for that, again, to, to breathe some life into an older machine. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's really what it comes down to. I mean, if you have a, if you have a newer computer and it's running fine, I, I don't really see the angle there. Uh, on, I mean, because again, you could just buy, like you can subscribe to a VPN and use that yeah. uh, as long as your computer is running smoothly enough, right? Like if, if, if you can justify paying that kind of money for a browser, because that's really what it would come down to, then I, I don't know, that would depend on your situation, right? Like, but the way I see it is that it, it, it's a useful product, but you, it, almost in siloed cases, like in siloed instances it's, or it's, for it's secret sub user. Yeah, sure, sure, it's, ahead, yeah, it's an easy fix for people that just want something simple that they can plug in yeah. and, and get yeah, browsing yeah. right away. Because I, I, I would even just look at, you know, getting a Raspberry Pi computer and, um, you know, hooking that up to a monitor with a keyboard and, and mouse. And you can kind of do the same thing for, you know, around the same same price and not have to pay like a, a yearly subscription on that. But again, uh, you know, they've done really well with their fix me sticks. I, I use them all the time. <laughs> like they're great uh, in their simplicity. Uh, so I think that's going to appeal to uh, a lot of folks. Ted, thanks for joining us today. Always a pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me. When we come back from the break, uh, John and I are going to talk about our experience with the new Shaw mobile service. Is it worth the price? Some great deals going on. The coverage good? We'll let you know back after this. You are back with Get Connected. It's Mike and John here. I want to talk about mobile plans and specifically the new Shaw mobile uh, plans that were announced over the past week and are available now. Uh, it feels like the competition's heating up a little bit here, finally, in Western Canada. Uh, in the past, uh, not a lot. I mean, you had the big three to choose from, TELUS, Rogers, Bell, and, uh, of course, Freedom Mobile, which is... Uh, uh, nationwide as well, which coincidentally is owned by Shaw. But uh, Shaw came out with some really aggressive pricing for the new Shaw mobile uh, plans. And John and I have both had a chance to actually try them out. I went down and got a SIM and put it in one of my phones just to see what the coverage was like. I think, John, you did something very similar. Uh, initial thoughts? Um, it's it's a pretty compelling offer. Uh, the the big concern that I had going into this was knowing that Freedom didn't have the best coverage as far as uh, the big three goes in comparison. Uh, definitely in the lower mainland in, in BC, it, it's pretty solid, it seems. And, and you and I have actually been in a few places together and have been surprised that our uh, the Shaw Mobile reception is actually better than Rogers and TELUS, which we both have as well. Um, but the, the big uh, concern for me is that going outside of uh, a densely populated area like the Lower Mainland, for example, you're then going on to basically their roaming partners and not a native uh, Shaw or Freedom uh, network. So you actually have a much more limited and, and slower bandwidth uh, amount of uh, data that you can use when you're, when you're roaming outside of your, your home base, if you will. And so that's kind of one of the concerns I have. Definitely the prices are fantastic. Um, the introductory offer for Shaw customers is you can get a uh, 25 gig data plan with unlimited texting and uh, voice for about $45 a month. Uh, or you can get a free plan, a $0 talking and text plan. And then you can app optionally add data for about $10 a gigabyte a month. It's, it's pretty compelling. John, because right right now I'm uh, I've got three people on my plan in, in my family, and um, you know they're averaging about seventy five bucks a month, mm -hmm. and, you know, for ten gigs. Right. The interesting thing too with the with the the data allocations is that it's rollover data as well. So if you buy ten gigs and you only use eight, you still have two gigs left that will still be there next month. That that is compelling. So the important thing here, the price works for me if you are a Shaw customer and you have the right internet TV bundle and you're yes. going to have to contact Shaw to see if you do qualify for that. But a lot of people do. Yep. And I'm one of those people. You're one of those people. It, 
this will actually save me hundreds of dollars. And I actually got my parents on this as well because they just do talk. They don't text, they don't do data. Uh, So, you know, you can actually get six uh, free phone lines on this, on this plan. Mm -hmm. No, it's definitely compelling that way. And uh, I I got a SIM uh, like you did, uh, and I just got a a, a random temporary number just so I can try it out before I decide to switch from my TELUS plan. Uh, And so far, I've been I've been quite impressed. Uh, I'm still debating on on dropping it down to a zero dollar plan and just having that as an extra line to to play with when you know we're doing all our phone reviews and stuff like that. But um, so far, everywhere I've been locally has been great coverage and service. And uh, I, I can't complain about that. My only concern, like I mentioned off the top, is that going outside of my home bubble, if you will, uh, what's that going to look like? What, you know, if we were to go to Toronto you know, at some point in the future, what would that be like? Uh, I'm going to have a much smaller data pool to play with. And uh, it's also a little bit slower as well that those roaming uh, agreements that they have, it's not at the full f- uh, 4G LTE speeds. It's slightly throttled. Do they say that? I, I didn't. Yeah, they do. Yeah. No. Yeah. So the out of the out of market uh, uh, speeds are a little bit limited. It, not a lot, but the maximum throughput you can get is much higher in your local zone. Yeah. So, I mean, the other plans, uh, so there's the $0 plan and then you can buy, you know, $10 a gig. And for a lot of people, like uh, I'm even thinking my wife, she doesn't go over more than a gig a month. Uh, you know, so that would be like essentially a $10 a month plan which is yeah. unheard of in Canada. And, and you also get access to all of Shaw's uh, wireless uh, internet hotspots as well, which yeah. you know definitely sweetens the pot and probably greatly reduces the amount of data that you're actually going to use because they're pretty much ubiquitous, at least in the lower mainland. Yeah, the Wi-Fi hotspots are across Western Canada. Yeah. Um, so the next plans up are uh, 45 and $55. And again, this is for Shaw customers that have the rights internet plans at home yeah. uh, and you'll have to check and see if you qualify, but the $45 one, it's, it's unlimited. Um, so you get 25 gigs on fast LTE. If you go over that, it goes down to a slower amount, but uh, I don't know how I would use that much. <laughs> we, we've uh, tried to use our 20 gig plans and it, that, that takes a lot of effort. <laughs> so it, it does. unless you're hotspotting, so, you know, 10 laptops. Yeah. Uh, so this also includes unlimited calls to Canada, unlimited incoming calls, unlim- unlimited global text, picture, and video messaging. Which is kind of huge, actually, because uh, I know just sending a text message to an American friend can cost you 75 cents to a dollar sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next one up was even more appealing to me because, well, not right now, but, you know, we do a lot of U.S. traveling as well. It's $55 a month, and you get unlimited here. Uh, in, you know, the Shaw, Shaw zones, which, you know, BC, Alberta, uh, and then two gigs outside of that. So if we're traveling to Toronto, it's two gigs a month. And if you're traveling down to US and Mexico, you get that two gigs as well. Yeah. And unlimited calling uh, to Canada, US and Mexico. Yeah. And the thing is we pay when we're roaming between seven and $12, depending on what country we're in for roaming, $10 a month under the Shaw plan is pretty compelling for North America roaming crazy but uh, overall your thoughts yay yeah i think so i think it just really depends and the part of this experiment for me was just finding out how good is my coverage in my house how good is it in the places that i normally go yeah. i'm still sort of experiencing all of those places and as i spend more time with it it's only been a few days with it so um but so far i'm actually pleasantly surprised you're out in port coquitlam here in bc yeah I'm out in uh, White Rock area. And so far it's been great. And, you know, obviously we work downtown Vancouver uh, and yeah, like you said, there's some areas where I'm getting better coverage. Yeah. Which didn't, doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Okay. Uh, we'll continue to test that and keep uh, everyone uh, abreast of uh, how we do with that. We're gonna have to take a break. When we come back, John's uh, got uh, the new Kia 2021 EV. We'll hear all about that and his uh, initial first thoughts. You listen to Get Connected here on the Chorus Radio Network. Back after this. You're back with Get Connected. Mike Agarbo here with John Beeler. Time to talk electric cars. Uh, I've had the good fortune of having my Tesla Model 3 for over a year now. I am loving it. I don't have to go into a gas station anymore. I can just basically plug into my house 
or uh, into one of the many chargers that uh, are out there. And uh, it's been pretty good overall. I've taken it up to Whistler. There's lots of charges along the way. There's chargers up in Whistler. I don't really ever worry about running out of uh, juice on it. John, uh, you're pretty excited. Uh, you've just uh, upgraded your car. You're into a new Kia 2021 uh, model uh, EV. Yeah, Soul EV, the it's the premium edition. If anyone's familiar with their line, they have two, they have the premium and then the, the sort of more spectacular version, which I couldn't quite swing, uh, which is the limited, uh, you get the sunroof, better stereo, better range, a little bit more horsepower, that kind of thing. But I'm extremely happy so far. I've only had it for a few days. Uh, I've put a lot of miles on it, just getting comfortable and, uh, figuring out how I'm going to not go to a gas station anymore. <laughs> uh, pleasantly surprised there's tons of charging stations right around my house i'm plugging into my house as we speak right now and uh the range anxiety is not there at all um the uh i did the math and my i had a 2010 kia soul and uh it was basically starting to fall apart it was pretty much at the end of life it maybe had 20k more on it before it was going to be totally done and uh did the math looking at maybe getting a gas vehicle for about the same price combined with all the rebates and other things that you can get right now. Uh, and again, I don't know how long those are going to last, especially with, you know, COVID and everything else like that. But uh, buying an EV right now in BC is pretty compelling. Uh, you get 5,000 federally as a rebate and 3,000 provincially. Uh, and they take that off the top uh, after tax. And so that you know brings down the price quite a bit. Uh, and I was also able to find a dealer very close to my house, actually, that had a, an available slot for the Scrap It program. Uh, my 2010 vehicle was going to get me between $1,000 and $2,000 on a trade-in so that they could, they could basically just crush it. Um, the Scrap It program gives uh, you $6,000 in a direct deposit payment if you buy a qualifying EV from a qualified dealer uh, as part of that program. So that's all in progress right now. And uh, my old car shall be visiting the great beyond very soon. And, uh, and you know, again, an, an additional $6,000 off the top of the cost really made it hard to not go electric you know, especially when you factor in that I no longer have to pay for gas. John, let's do the math there. So you had $8,000 between the federal and provincial uh, tax uh, credits on that. And that's yep. just pure cash right off the top. Uh, so that's $8,000. And then you qualified for the Scrap It program because uh, you wanted to get rid of your old car. That's another $6,000. That's $14,000. Yeah. Off the top. Yeah. If you don't mind me asking, how much was the, the Kia? The it's it the list price is forty five thousand. So when you take sixteen off the top of that, it's pretty. That's hard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how much did they offer you for the trade in for your old Kia? Uh, well, ironically, last year I was looking at this same equation, and they offered me a thousand dollars. So I kind of knew, like, well, they're gonna they're gonna you know play up some of the the things that are going wrong with my car, but. I still got another year out of it for, you know, and, and this time he actually, the, the guy was good. He tried to find a wholesaler that would give me more. They, they, he had hoped to maybe even beat Scrap It program as far as trade-ins, but the best he could do was about $2,000. So again, that's basically $4,000 extra back in my pocket um, that I can put towards the car, or put towards a credit card, what, you know, whatever, and, uh, and don't have to think about it. And um Especially, you know, we've had a lot of conversations on this program about how your experience with EV has been. And, and also Stephen, one of our, our content producers, he's, he's recently joined the EV club as well. And so there's lots of conversations about it. And the biggest thing that we're all very happy with is there's really no downside. No. I, I mean, it's all, it's all positives as far as I can tell so far. And, and I'm still pretty much the noob in the club. And, um, but it's, it's definitely something that is fun to drive. Uh, the big thing with an EV, even if you're not getting a premium EV, like a Tesla or something like that, is these cars drive unlike any car you've driven. Um, when you press the gas, you go and you go like stink, even in it's eco the mode. <laughs> so, um, and then my car has like an eco mode and a normal mode and a sport mode, which, you know, just uses the electricity a little bit better depending on which mode you're in. But even in the sport mode, it feels like a race car to me, you know. Let's talk about uh, quickly charging, John. 
uh, you and I are kind of in a similar, similar situation right now as far as charging. Uh, you talked about Steven, one of our uh, team members. Uh, he actually installed a, a fast charger in his house, yep. uh, which it's probably going to run you about a thousand bucks. I mean, you can go down a little, up a little, but let's just say that's in that kind of range. Uh, I haven't. And the reason why I didn't is because my house, I've used up all <laughs> the, the breakers on the panel. And so the electrician basically told me it's going to be another $5,000 to install another panel in my house. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, I just, I don't have the money for that right now. So I'm just plugging my car, my Tesla into a regular 110 volt plug. Yeah. It's not super fast, but I get about 10 kilometers an hour charge. Again, that's 10 kilometers per hour charge into my car. So overnight, it's like 100 kilometers. And yeah. it, it's working for me. I mean, every so often I might have to go to one of the faster chargers uh, around. And, you know, there's actually a couple free ones in my neighborhood. Uh, but I, it hasn't been a big deal for me. No, and, and that, that was definitely something that I factored into this whole equation was the fact that, you know, I can't go to a gas station anymore and I, there's going to be times where I'm going to need to do the quick charge. But I found very quickly, there's a number of apps that will help you find this. Even my car shows me where all the charging stations are nearby uh, and it's auto updated all the time. Uh, there's plenty of free ones. Even the ones that you have to pay for are really inexpensive. Uh, there's one near me that's uh, $2 or it's free for the first hour and then $2 an hour after that. So even then it's still, you know, and it's only going to take a couple hours to do a full charge from almost empty. Um, so it's just, it, it's really, when you start looking at those types of things, it's really hard to ever want to get a gas combustion engine again. And keep in mind, you, you are paying for electricity when you plug it into your house. It's going to be a few hundred dollars a year, but uh, John, I was spending $500 and you know, when the gas prices were, were way up 600 bucks a month on gas, uh, you know, I have a Chevy Traverse uh, going from, you know, White Rock into Vancouver. Yeah. It was yeah. killing me. I, I read a study which helped help with this whole thing is that the average EV owner in Canada, and I, it may even be specifically to BC, pays around 225 to $250 a year. I was paying that a month in gas for my Kia, my gas Kia. So, you know, for that to spread out over 12 months is so much more compelling. And that's assuming I'm plugging in every night to my home stuff. There's plenty of places uh, around the office, plenty of places around my house where I can go and uh, I can go plug in for a couple hours, pop over to the pub, go to a restaurant, come back, my car's done and ready. Talking all about uh, electric vehicles, uh, John, his new uh, Kia Soul uh, and uh, looking forward to hear more about it over the, the, the coming weeks, uh, John. And uh, all the new things they're going to learn about it. When we come back from the break, more tech to talk here on Get Connected. And we'll talk about how you can win a new Samsung Galaxy A71 smartphone. Back after this. You're back with Get Connected. Mike and John here. Don't forget to hit our website. It's pretty awesome. Getconnectedmedia.com. We've got the contest going there. We're giving away a Samsung Galaxy a71 smartphone. This thing is all kinds of awesome. Uh, runs the Android operating system worth about 550 bucks. If you want a chance to win, again, the website, getconnectedmedia.com. Hit the newsletter tab, subscribe, and you are entered to win. Don't forget also to check out our YouTube channel. Uh, you can uh, search for Get Connected there as well. Uh, and we'd love if you watched our videos, uh, like them, comment on them, and subscribe to the channel uh, as well. It helps us uh, make more videos for you. Everything from how-to videos to product reviews to things like smart homes and smart cars. We're covering it uh, all. And again, that's the Get Connected uh, YouTube channel. I want to thank all the folks that uh, helped put the show together. And also a shout out to our sister show, The App Show, every Sunday from 10 to 11, Sunday mornings here on CKNW 980. On, uh, in Vancouver and it goes across the Chorus Radio Network all the way to Winnipeg uh, as well. Tomorrow we'll be talking about the big Samsung announcement. They've uh, announced a whole bunch of cool new gear, new smartwatches, new earbuds, new folding phones and the new Samsung Note 20 phone with a special pen. John, uh, I want to thank you for co-hosting and producing the show and also our other producer, Christina and the rest of the gang back at the ranch. We'll see you again next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube page. And you know that little bell icon? Hit that and you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And comment. The more comments and the more likes and subscriptions we get, the more videos we can make.